Well, the day is upon us. We're here at Kamiyama Motors, right up the road from where I live and right down the road from the farm. And it's time to make install number one. But before we get to the whole install side, let's go over some of the parts that we actually will be installing on the vehicle. Oh, what vehicle? The 2013 Daihatsu High Jet Cargo Deck Fan G Edition. The Daihatsu deck van is based off of the cargo van chassis and not the Daihatsu high jet pickup truck. So the genetics and, well, body for the most part are all vans. So it rides a little bit lower. There's not a whole ton in the wheel well area. These tires are just barely over a year old. These are Dunlop Grand Trex and eh, they ain't great. Talk about being balder than Jeff Bezos chilling on a yacht. These are just your standard all-terrain, quote-unquote, generic K-truck tires over here. They're cheap, and they, well, don't work that great. They honestly aren't awesome in the mud. They're, get, yeah, actually, the traction in the mud sucks. Um, in the snow, they're halfway decent. Um, sand, also halfway decent. Wet traction blows, uh, they're noisy, they all around are just, in my opinion, crap. Furthermore, these are just your standard 12 inch steelies that they wrap around. So that doesn't help ride height whatsoever. And oh, yeah, they just are, well, they are what they are. So to help out my dick fan, we have partnered up with some awesome Japanese auto parts manufacturers to help get this guy to a point where, well, I'm not constantly worried about the oil pan getting ripped off when I'm up on the farm tootling around. Ugh. We have lift springs from Forest Auto Factory. These are the guys who are a Tokyo Auto Salon winning Grand Prix winning at that company. These guys actually specialize in handcrafted wooden frame dune buggies and what have you. They're just phenomenal. I'll have to share some information on these guys. I've seen them in person at Tokyo Auto Salon. They do great work. But they also make springs, lift springs for various K vehicles. So that's great. Um, of course, we have our just our generic standard stainless steel lug nuts um we'll upgrade to something else down the line but for now they will work um we also have um bolt locks um which uh they're a great partner to work with these guys are your one key lock solution for those who aren't familiar with them we'll include some info in the description below these guys are great these are especially this cable lock up here he's going to be uh very important for keeping that fifth wheel and tire uh, attached to the roof of the vehicle securely and not have it stolen from us. The wheel and tire combo that I went with is the WEDS or WED Sport Mud Vance 06 wheel. This is a 14 inch roller with your standard 43 offset. So it will meet Japanese Department of Transportation inspection code. It also, has a relatively flat face because of this, which uh, is an ideal. I like a little more uh, depth on my wheel, but hey, you gotta work with what you got for now. The wheels are also a four and a half inch width, which unlike the stock wheels on uh, my K-Truck, uh, which are a four inch wide wheel, uh, provide a little bit more grip off-road, hopefully, especially if we air down. Being that WEDS is so awesome, they also included uh, center caps as well as uh, their signature valve stem hardware with each wheel. Now, as for the tires, I went with Yokohama's XAT line because I needed something well that is daily drivable and uh, wouldn't make too much noise with a decent sidewall. Sizing is a 165-65 R14 and uh, which is pretty much as big as you can go legally from what I can tell on a K truck. Um, uh, especially on my K-Truck. So yeah, again, we're just trying to stick with code and uh, basically get as close to the limit as we can. Now, one of the primary reasons I went with this particular tire is also because it is 100% made in Japan still, and it apparently has a really tough reinforced sidewall. 
Now, a couple other quick notes on this wheel tire combo that I've just noticed is uh, first and foremost, uh, the tires themselves are actually rather heavy. Again, they have this really intense reinforced sidewall, apparently, that Yokohama built just for the XAT that, well, makes them very desirable, but again, pretty heavy. But that's totally worth the sacrifice. As long as they work, they work. I really don't care. The truck's going to be slow no matter what. Now, how much weight goes into it? Mm-hmm. Yep. And no, we're not modifying the pink Vespa. Don't ask. <laughs> So as you can clearly see, rear suspension is just your standard trailing arm setup. Really simple stuff like, well, the entire vehicle. We will also be removing the spare tire in the back because it hangs relatively low. And being that we have five wheels and five tires, uh, all in a bigger, beefier configuration, we will be able to negate the need to utilize that sucker. So he's coming out. Naturally, there's discussion of installing a lateral rod at some point too that's fully adjustable, uh, which of course kind of goes without saying as well. Um, and then of course, well, we'll get to the rear diff in due time. In Japanese, this is what you call the senpai kohai relationship, where the trained pro who's been doing this for years teaches a younger apprentice how to get the job done. And they're out. Yeah, these will give us a little bit of a lift. Not much. We're looking at maybe an inch with these or so. But with the larger wheels and tires, we'll gain another inch. So about two inches all told. <laughs> Rear lift springs installed, we turn toward my tires once more for a little bit of a uh, Riederuski. As it clearly states here, the plies on the sidewall are double polyester tread with polyester times two with steel times two and nylon times one. These are way heavier for that reason primarily. But I don't like the idea of having a slash sidewall when I'm off-roading, so yeah, I'll take the extra weight. Oh my heavens, would you just look at that tiny little rotor the size of my hand. Oh my gosh, it really is about the size of my hand. It's so small. Look at this caliper. Oh my gosh, I've taken craps bigger than that. Ooh. Basic McPherson strut front suspension. Hey, if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. Who cares, right? So apparently, the access point for the front suspension top hat is down underneath the dash ladies and gentlemen this is a man who can work on any daihatsu by touch alone blindfolded he can do it seriously he hasn't tried to look under there once and insists that we will not be removing any part of the dash to get out the front suspension and down she comes all right, well, as you can see, we have one front McPherson strut out. He did it all by touch alone up underneath the driver's side portion of the dash and really didn't look at it once, once he allocated exactly where the top hat bolts were located. Um, and in case you were wondering, no, that is not a leaky strut. He washed it before getting under there because it was a little muddy. Now, we will more than likely be upgrading these struts down the line, but being that, well, time is of the essence, and I need to have this thing lifted ASAP, we don't have time to have something custom made for the vehicle, we're just rolling with the uh, stock struts for now because they will work with the suspension. But seriously, look at these things, itty bitty, that's my foot sitting right next to it. So uh, yeah, you really are looking about literally two feet long. Luckily, the passenger side access point is much better because, well, you don't have to worry about a steering wheel. Very nice. Compare this to this. Definitely a better tread design, but also definitely a bit more of that sidewall, which we have been needing. 
Ah, I like the looks of this. That's a little over an inch or so. Now going from a width standpoint, we are gaining half an inch of width, which again isn't much, but that's about all we are allowed legally. So yeah, I got to keep this guy street legal for now. So yeah, again, we can always air down a little bit if we're off road. Something else that attracted me to the Geolander XAT was this. M plus S, mud and snow, which we have plenty of up here in the mountains. At least the mud part. Snow, eh, you get hit a few times a year, but it's not too bad. I've read a lot of reviews and a lot of people say that when it comes to an all-terrain tire, they're relatively quiet. They also have, from what I understand, pretty decent tread life. You got a lot of guys that are in America that are carrying heavier loads or rocking really wide rubber. They complain about them wearing down too quickly. But I think on something that's only four and a half inches wide, which will be rocking some pretty decent uh, air compression ratios inside for maybe not all the way maxed out, but close to that 40 PSI that is suggested. I don't think we'll have too much of an issue. Stock springs from the front are off. Everything's cleaned up inside there, and he says it's all looking hunky-dory for the most part. Nothing super serious. Uh, Holding everything up with this tiny little piece of wire. Very nice. Whereas you can tell that the circumference of each spring is about the same as the stock unit, the height of the aftermarket unit in the front is a fuzz taller. Again, not a massive lift, just a bit of one. Another reason why I went with Forest Auto Factory for springs for my little dick Ben is because, well, not just that they have great reviews from a bunch of different customers and have been supporting the Daihatsu community for years now, and also not because they are a Tokyo Auto Salon Grand Prix winning automotive builder. It's because these springs are still made in Japan out of Japanese steel. So, they're about as high quality as it gets. Yukuri yukuri, ne? <laughs> All right. Get rid of that hunk of junk. Iranai, ne? Yeah, we don't need that. We don't need the spare tire underneath. And oh, yeah, now look at all this real estate. Okay, well, everything's on the vehicle for our mini lift kit. <laughs> We did have a couple of slight hangups that are easily fixable that we noted along the way. And here's what we have. This driver's side is pretty darn close. I mean, we're talking millimeters of space. So, um, yeah, cheapy, flimsy plastic bumper. It's all freaking warped probably from, well, heat, sun, whatever. You know, little scuffs have happened over the years and, you know, instances where it's gotten bumped or what have you. So my, our thoughts are uh, we're going to get out the Dremel and just shave out this lower lip to start with. And nobody will see it and we'll have all the clearance we need for off-roading. And then there was the issue with the spare tire, which is an undermounted unit. The tire itself was old pretty much dry rotted out which so needed to be removed but getting it out required an act of god in one hell of a long breaker bar followed by a pretty beefy round of impact action with uh some silicone spray and a little bit of heat so that did eventually come out we removed the entire unit got rid of the spare tire it's no longer under there we have a lot more real estate a little bit more clearance to boot and I guess that leads us to, well, our question of what are we going to do for a spare? Whoa, would you look at that? It just magically appeared. Where did this come from? <laughs> no, in all seriousness, there's a reason why our partners at Wed's Wheels and at Yokohama Tire kick so much ass. They sent us an extra of each to include as a full-size spare. So when we're off-roading, we don't have to worry about running on a rinky-dinky donut. Now, as for mounting this sucker, we're just going to forego the whole undercarriage style mounting bracket system entirely because, well, 
it's just a pain in the ass and it's just asking to get rust riddled all over again. Instead, we are going to be mounting our spare on the roof of the vehicle for now. There is talk of getting a rear cage for the rear window for protective purposes, which at that point we will be able to mount the spare here on the back window and put a, uh, a backup camera down underneath near the license plate for backup purposes. Now security wise, we are turning toward bolt lock for our partnership because these guys really do make the best locking system in the world in my opinion. It's a one key system where basically you lock it closed and then to open it, you turn that key once and it programs to whatever key you install. So may it be your ignition key, which is the way to go in my opinion, if it's you know automotive oriented um, or something else, all you gotta do is slap that one key in it, give it a twist and boom, it programs straight to that key. And then you can use that same key for the next lock. So it can be a padlock, it can be you know, a cable lock like I have here that we're gonna use on this guy. Um, it, it could be a trailer hitch receiver lock. It, it, they've got a ton of different stuff. And we're gonna be testing out a few of these products to see how well they work with one key and also well, how well they work tying down various odds and ends because we're going to have a lot of overlanding gear on the back of this puppy when it's time to go off road. Now as for the act of getting a bolt lock to lock it is just as simple as opening the cap. I've already removed the protective seal that is normally there. Uh, they just you know a little bit of tape to cover it up and keep it protected from corrosion while it's sitting on the shelf and then take your key install and turn it until it stops and after it stops you slowly return it remove it and then do it again one two three times and boom Bob's your uncle. A little bit of a test of ruski now that it is rotated and been programmed. Turn and whoop. Now regarding fitment for this up on the roof, uh, this cable lock, well, it's just right on. Our measurements may be a little off in regard to our extended lug nut size, but the cable lock is ideal for threading through here. So we'll thread this from the bottom, run it up top, latch her down, and call it a day. Now, as far as mounting goes, we're just going to slap it toward the back and strap it in from each side. Japan's typically pretty safe. You don't have a lot of theft over here. So running one cable lock should be enough to keep this sucker tied down. There we are. Yeah. Ooh, that was a close one. I don't think this is going anywhere. Uh, yeah, it's wrapped through and under and or up back over and around so it doesn't get... Uh, corroded or anything and uh, it actually snugs up nicely between the tread blocks on the tire itself. So stay tuned because we've got way more Daihatsu mini truck action in the near future. Uh, starting off with testing the setup and seeing what we can and cannot clear. We also are going to be swapping up the front bumper, cutting out a whole bunch of that erroneous plastic and throwing in some iron goodness along with the winch overlanding gear better lighting a whole bunch of things that are pretty necessary in my opinion so thanks for tuning in catching up and uh laughing along with us because i know this thing's a bit on the goofy side but hey that makes two of us catch you later